How's it going, everybody? Brian Elvers and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio, June 16, 2022, figure 4, online.com, slash wrestlingobserver.com. Got to start with this story, and then we'll let Dave go into all the details. WWE's board of directors investigating a $3 million settlement that Vince McMahon agreed to pay to a former employee who he allegedly had an affair with. Wall Street Journal reports the board of directors has been investigating the settlement since April, has uncovered other older non-disclosure agreements involving both McMahon and head of talent relations John Laurinaitis that totaled millions of dollars. The board learned of the $3 million settlement via anonymous emails received from somebody who identified themselves as a friend of the former employee. The first email was sent to the board March 30th, alleges Vince initially hired the woman as a paralegal at $100,000 a year, but it was later bumped up to 200000 after McMahon began a sexual relationship with her. Email alleges McMahon, quote, gave her like a toy to John Laurinaitis. Hold on. So so that's a really weird statement, like gave her like a toy. What, is that, what does that mean? Because it's like if you, you know, the woman, okay, it's a 41-year-old woman um, who had worked in the legal department and was then uh, transferred to working under John Laurinaitis. And, I mean, there's always the big question of a sexual relationship within a company when your boss is involved because of the power that a boss has over an employee, uh, which can make things, um, you know, a lot of companies forbid this. And, um, and this is, you know, and there's multiple cases of this with, with Vince going back, um, you know, probably... In 35 years or more um, so that and that's not that's not necessarily a secret or anything like that um, but one of the, the key aspects of this is that um, Jerry McDivitt who's obviously representing Vince and who we have not heard from today um, has said that that they did not use any company money to for these deals and Jerry was involved in negotiating these deals for Vince um, um, and also that all of these relationships were consensual. Um, there's always that issue of a consensual relationship between the boss and an employee, especially someone working, working directly um, for them, um, underneath them, like this was uh, John Lornice's assistant, is the woman in question. And uh, John, as many of you know, is uh, married to, uh, you know, uh, the Bella's mother. So um, that's another issue. There's a million issues involved in this one. Uh, but you know that the 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 one of the key things in this in this story is if he events bumped her salary from hundred thousand to hundred thousand upon commencing an affair with this woman, then that is uh, that is company money, and that changes the dynamics. The dynamics are bad either way. But um, I know from people in the company that they believe that that one could be the most damaging. And um, the board of directors, would, there's the, the board of directors, with the exception of uh, Vince, Stephanie, Paul Levesque, and, and Paul Levesque, um, have started an investigation. They've hired a firm, uh, Simpson, Thatcher, and uh, Bartlett, uh, to examine these deals, the former deals that they found out about, and the corporate culture of WWE, which is a scary one because it isn't, you know, it's always been said to be an old boy's culture, if you know what an old boy's culture means, and um, and also their human resources and also their, you know, compliance and things like this. So the company is being investigated. It's an independent investigation. Um, it's all coming out like literally right now. One of the points that I also want to make before we go on is that um, the investigation is being headed by Manjeet Singh, who is a member of the board of directors, um, and the McMahon family members are not involved. Now there's like the big question. This, the board of directors started getting this information a couple months ago. They got the information before Stephanie quit. So, that, so, so Stephanie would have known about this before she quit whether this is tied in or not we do not know but it is um the timing it becomes very very interesting um because of her leaving 
and then of her being buried on the way out and when all of these stories broke both her leaving and her being buried later when that came out a couple weeks later we kept saying like there's there's more to, why would Vince bury her and and you know I still don't have an answer as to why but this does add an element of you know another dynamic of everything that was going on while this was going on so continue settlement which took place in january bars a former employee was hired in 2019 from discussing her relationship with mcmahon former employee moved from the legal department to become laurenitis assistant 2021 the email said my friend was so scared so she quit after vince mcmahon and lawyer jerry paid her millions of dollars to shut up Okay, so so um, yeah, Jerry McDivitt allegedly is you know um, was involved in these things. Now Jerry McDivitt has said that uh, said the company did not or that no company money was used to pay off any of these settlements. And I guess he was the guy who brokered the settlements, and also said that all of these relationships were consensual. So um, you know that's you know and of course of course he's going to be the defense of Vince. I mean the thing I find interesting is, uh, I mean I have not heard from Jerry McDivitt all day today, and uh, usually in a situation like this, I mean you would you know I would I would hear from him. You know I've known the guy for decades, um, so it's it's both very serious and also something that they are that they are, I don't think they have their their um, public defense yet um, obviously they knew about the story McDivitt was contacted about the story uh, the story's you know been I mean it, it really all broke you know because of the the investigation literally has just started a couple of days ago um, start on I guess Sunday so okay go go ahead from there the non-disclosure agreement which WWE's board of directors received a copy of on June 12th provided an upfront payment of one million dollars to the former employee with the remaining two million to be distributed over the next five years, the report said that investigators have learned in recent days of other non-disclosure agreements involving McMahon and Laurinaitis. Wall Street Journal couldn't confirm how many previous agreements are under investigation. Multiple. WWE I, spokesman. I mean, um, yeah, there's. I don't, I don't want to get into too many details, but it's it's multiple. Yes. WWE spokesman in the reports that the company is cooperating fully with the board inquiry, so the relationship with the ex-paralegal was consensual. WWE then issued a internal statement to staff, which said, quote, The Wall Street Journal has published a report about WWE with allegations that we and our board of directors take seriously. We're cooperating fully with the independent investigation initiated by our board of directors. So Yes, so also... Story. Okay, so Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis are going to tv friday it is uh at least as of a couple hours ago that's what we had heard and that it they are basically saying it is um business as usual oh yeah that is what they are saying yes so um i don't know how it could be business as usual you know i mean and again like this is very early in the game. Nobody's been fired yet. Not sure if that's Obviously, a good term to use this week. A business as usual. Yeah, I know, really, when you think about it. Um, the, another aspect is, you know, like, um, I mean, look, look, look. Major CEOs, far more powerful than Vince McMahon, have been brought down for less than this. But the defense is, and I know people in the company who have, you know, who, who, do believe Vince will survive this. Not so sure about John Laurinaitis, but do believe Vince will survive this, you know, with the idea that as long as, you know, there's no company funds used to pay this off, it's just, you know, that that would be okay. I mean, the big thing is, you know, this broke today. It broke after the stock market closed today. Um, so how the stock market reacts and, and, it, and this story was huge. I mean, it was not just some wrestling story. I mean, it was covered by every major outlet uh, almost immediately. Uh, all the big business outlets, it broke on the business side. So it will be interesting. You know, WWE stock had been doing very, very well for reasons we talked about, you know, in the newsletter for the last couple of weeks in the sense of, um, you know, they're. In a very uncertain economic times, which we are in, very uncertain, their money is all guaranteed and their profit margin is all guaranteed, which is not the case with most uh, companies these days where, you know, um, 
cutbacks, you know, in consumer spending can hurt the revenues and profits of a lot of companies. And um, with WWE, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I suppose a company could default, but essentially their revenue, their revenues are guaranteed for the next several years. So it's a very safe investment and it is a guarantee that, 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 you know, there's no way this company won't be super, super, super profitable. Both WWE and UFC are guaranteed incredible profits um, for, you know, for years and years and years to come. Um, so, so, but if the stock, if there's a reaction to the stock, I mean, one of the things, obviously there's going to be uncertainty as to the future of Vince McMahon, number one. There may be pressure from the outside, whether it's, you know, there may be pressure from the outside, whether it's sponsors or whatever, regarding Vince. The loss of Vince, whether this is good or bad in our eyes, uh, running the company, the reality is is that in the business world, uh, you know, Vince has a certain reputation of being, you know, the guy, you know, the and everything. And the feeling is, is that if there was no Vince... Uh, the, there would be great uncertainty of the stock. Now, it's not that it would. It, it certainly would not be as bad as it would have been. You know, um, the the fear of losing Vince would have been catastrophic to the stock a couple of years ago. Now, it wouldn't be as catastrophic because, as we said, whether there's a Vince or there's no Vince, the revenue is guaranteed. So it's not like you know before where this idea that you know Vince is this genius that built this business and nobody else can do the business and if Vince is gone what the hell happens the reality is is that Vince can be gone and all of these revenues are guaranteed for years um, so it's not um, financially as catastrophic still you know he's the face of the company and the other aspect is is if something were to happen with Vince what is the succession plan who is the guy who will be in charge there will be absolute chaos there. Then there's a question of, will there be a sale? You know, um, there's a question of what, you know, what does, you know, where does Stephanie McMahon fit in? Why was she buried? Um, there's, you know, there's so many questions here. Well, I got a question. Okay. So, uh, obviously, Jerry McDivitt is claiming that, like, all this money that was paid was not company monies. Right. Right. But, you know, she allegedly was paid uh, $100,000 a year. Yeah, that's and huge. Then, and then later that's, bumped that, to 200000 That's. But that's, here's, here's my question. Yes. So how do these non-disclosure agreements work in the sense that people do get raises? So Vince, I'm sure, will just say, well, I... You know, we gave her a raise. It had nothing to do with a sexual relationship. We just gave her a raise. Yeah, well, it's, 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 will it's, she it's, be allowed to like? Because she's according to this non-disclosure, she cannot talk about this relationship. Will she be able if well, if well, well, that's what the whole investigation investigated. Is. Will she be able to say, well, you know, I do believe that it was solely because of this sexual relationship. I don't know what the details are as far as the investigation goes, but they, you know. I mean that's that's a key. There, you know, there's going to be, um, you know, I mean, obviously that is a key thing being investigated right now. Now, another aspect of this is like the board has power, but Vince has more power. I mean, Vince has, you know, even though Vince does not own a majority of the stock, Vince owns the way that the the stock is set up. Vince owns uh, a, a huge majority of the voting power. So it's not like like Vince can be voted out. Um, he would have to resign or there would have to be outside pressure that would make Vince quit, which is one of the reasons why, like I said, like he's he's going like there's it's just business as usual. And he may be, you know, this this could be the end of Vince. I mean, I, I you know, I have talked to a lot of people who, you know, um, you know, out from this area, you know, in big business, and they looked at this and they said he's he's done, um, because you would be done for a lot less. And there are people who were in charge of much bigger companies here that had much less than this, and they were done. Um, it's not, it's not. This is not also not a Harvey Weinstein, although it could end up being, but it's not because, um, you know, Harvey Weinstein, you know, um, who was one of the biggest names who got done in by this, the idea was is that 
he used his power to end careers and things like that um you know um which there's you know again if if it comes out that there's people who have had career changes or something like this that's an issue another issue is is who's going to come out you know like when this stuff happens um you know if there's a lot of instances there could be other people coming out publicly on this you know that's what happens is is the, the media starts investigating although they may not because it is wrestling so that's one of the things Vince has going for him and one of the reasons that you know a lot of his you know past improprieties have kind of gone unnoticed except in um 1982 when when the media was investigating him and stuff came out but in um which also brings up the you know other stories you know um and i probably should bring up the rita chatterton story right now you know rather than uh because it, it will be brought up by people and everything like that. so rita chatterton was a female referee the first female referee in wwe this would be in the um mid 80s and years later in 1982 you know during all of the stuff with vince and pat patterson and and all that when all that st those stories were breaking she was on uh, Geraldo Rivera show, I think it was now it can be told, but the, one of those shows, and basically claimed that that she had a relationship with Vince in the backseat of the limousine, and and claimed it was not consensual, and it really didn't go anywhere because we were in a very different era. You know what happened to Vince in 1992? If it happened today, uh, would have been far far more damaging because you know at the t you know number one wrestling is more high profile in a lot of ways. Um, you know, and it's also a publicly traded company, which it was in fact then. Um, and also things like that that were kind of like accepted in society are far less accepted in society now. But you know, the case was so long ago, a lot of people forgot about it. Now, I, I do want to say that, um, you know, back in those days when this story was had broken, I mean, and 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 the Vince having a sexual relationship with rita chatterton i mean that is vince told me that too i mean it's like i'm not saying anything that 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 you know i mean that 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 one is true and the question is was it consensual and was not and obviously vince vince's story was that it was and the only thing and i do want to say this is um you know when that came out i just remember that that tom zink and, and now of course you know tom zink is not what i would call a super reliable person but he did hate vince um and, and linda a lot for a number of reasons um but he did tell me that you know he'd spoken to rita chatterton and rita chatterton had talked to him about you know what happened and did not you know the indication that zinc had that everything she said that it was not non-consensual you know he said like she basically talked that she was whatever but it was not like Vince forced himself on her, which is what she did say later on Geraldo Rivera. So um, that is that's the Rita Chatterton story, which which you know again I've seen it already on Twitter. You know what happened, and probably people have clips of you know her interview and everything like that. So just wanted to bring that up. Um, so anything else because we got a million questions that i probably need to go through here on this well the questions of the mailbag are mostly questions we've already answered a lot of people asking did stephanie leak this story okay so, is so there a tie le in okay leaking leaking the story is very interesting because um i i am aware i mean like for most people i mean put this like, like the talent the talent didn't know okay Talent didn't know anything at all. This all hit them at the same time it hit us, you know. Um, and they don't really know what to make of it. They're all asking questions, obviously. Uh, same questions that we're all asking. And, you know, and, and again, what happens? You know, is if Vince is gone, who's, you know, who's in charge? Where does the thing go? Um, obviously, there's the, you know, the big question of who on the board of directors leaked it, you know, and, you know, whatever. I mean you know there's it's it's a it's a question but but i think it was probably somebody on the board it may have been the per, you know some the person who leaked it to the board then leaking it and you know the wall street journal finding out the dates and everything and being told that from the outside but it's um 
the fact of the investigation, everything seems to indicate that that somebody on the board did. Um, and so you got 12 people there that would, or you know, well, obviously, obviously Vince didn't. So you got 11 people there that that you can, you know, look at and and whatever, um, whatever it could be one of those. But we don't really have that answer, obviously. Well, what questions do you have that we haven't addressed yet? Okay, let me just go through the uh, questions here because we got a, I got a ton of them. Um, is there a morals clause in the WWE contract with Saudi Arabia that Saudi Arabia can use to get out of the contract with WWE if Vince was fired? Um, I do not know the answer, but I don't think that that deal, you know, I mean, it's almost like, in a sense, and I shouldn't say this, because, but, but, um, in a sense, that's almost comedic because it's morals clause with Saudi Arabia, you know, considering everything. But there absolutely is with the television deals, um, and there could be there could be something from sponsors, I, and there could be nothing, but there could be something from sponsors which would put pressure on. There could be something from from Fox and NBCU. They absolutely, if the story got too big and became a major thing. Um, I don't think that, that, you know, I, I, I mean, again, I don't see them canceling a television show at the, you know, at the, especially NBCU, the value between the Peacock and everything. I mean, the, the WWE's got a lot in there and they don't want to lose that. But if they're, if the pressure is there and it becomes a big enough media story, um, you know, that, that, that pressure from them, I mean, could they can't, they could cancel. I don't think they will cancel. Um, they also could put a lot of pressure on, and that would also be a very interesting thing. But Saudi Arabia, I mean, like I look, I didn't, I don't know the contract, but I don't know that like that would necessarily. Um, I don't know if that would necessarily uh, be the one to worry about. Um, will this affect the stock badly? I mean, we'll find out. We'll find out tomorrow. You know, I mean, that's a real key thing. Um, if there's uncertainty, it should affect the stock. Um, does the amount of stock owned by Vince allow him some protection from severe consequences? Um, not the amount of stock, um, but the voting power. Vince's stock, you know, they have class A and class B, and, the, and the, the class of stock that Vince has has 10 times more voting power than the other. So essentially, the McMahon family and Vince himself own 80% of the voting power. So that does protect him to a degree and maybe even to a significant degree. And that's why, I mean, I know, again, like I know people who think he is not going to survive this one, but the people who I know in the company and, you know, they are not as convinced that, that, um, that, uh, he will be gone. I mean, John Laurinaitis, uh, you know, the, his odds aren't nearly as good. Um, can Vince get in trouble if the board thinks, Vince doubling the salary of the paralegal that Vince was allegedly having an affair was, was was overpaid using the company's money. Absolutely. That is probably the crux of the most important thing here um, in that investigation. And that is, um, you know, but, the, the you know, the thing is, there is a, you know, again, we're talking about multiple situations, not a one. And that could also work against you. You know, um, here's another thing, too, is they have established, like I said, when when these type of stories happen, it's it often would be more people come forward. One of the aspects of that also is is that a lot of people who may come forward are probably you know in these situations are often looking for money, and we have established by this thing that the price is three million dollars. So someone who may have not like complained can look and go like, hey. You know, the going rate's $3 million, You know what I mean? And, I mean, I that was something that a lot of people brought up to me today um, in the wrestling business is that is that aspect of the story. Um, from an AEW perspective, this Wall Street Journal article coming out at the worst time, while I'm not convinced it will lead to major changes in WWE immediately, hypothetically, how bad it would be for a company with over... 10 times bigger and absolutely huge revenue and a very talented roster all of a sudden have a competent booker in charge of all this talent um i'm not exactly sure what that what's that question say 
They're basically saying if Vince is gone and a good booker ends up running WWE and the product gets better, would this be bad for AEW? Whatever. Um, that's who knows. It, it could be, it could not be. I mean, who knows who's that's the th the situation here too is that if something happens to Vince, who who ends up in charge? I mean, it might be Levac. You know, I mean, which who was who. You know, two days ago, I would have said no chance. And I mean, like, and look, you still have to deal with the fact that, that Paul Levesque has a very serious heart issue. And um, this is an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly stressful position that he probably shouldn't be doing. Um, but it's not like they've, you know, like, again, other things could happen to Vince. You know, Vince is not a young man. And the secession of this company has been in question ever since really Paul Levesque failed with, with NXT. Since then, it's been like, well, who's going to be the guy? I mean, obviously, the guy in theory is Bruce Pritchard. And, you know, and Bruce is not a young man, and Bruce has had heart issues too. Um, and, you know, I mean, I, I, I do know people within the company who were just like, you know, Bruce could not handle this. But, you know, he would be the guy right now. He's the number two guy in that division um does this investigation make it more or less likely the company is sold um probably more um probably more yeah yeah i mean and and again maybe for the very reason of of survivability if it if it gets worse um if too many things get out um hold on. if the wall street journal's timeline is correct and the investigation began in April. Do you think it puts into question Stephanie McMahon stepping down only a few weeks later? Does her absence include stepping back from the board of directors? No, she's still on the board of directors. We've talked about this before. That's why I thought the whole thing was so weird of them burying her, you know, getting that story out to bury her when she was still on the board. The timing, obviously, we spoke about this. Yes, it's it's um, the timing of Stephanie leaving and and she would have known about this because the board knew about this. Um, that, you know, yes, it's giant question, giant question. Uh, I can't imagine it's a very comfortable place for her to be in in the middle of such a crisis. No, I cannot imagine that that uh, that that she's feeling wonderful uh, right about now. Um, I was wondering what the internal belief in WWE is for the or or origins of these stories on Vince, not suggesting it reflects reality, but depending on what agenda is in play, it could be easily attributed to an internal coup from a Nick Khan faction, especially following the Stephanie article, or to an external force like Tony Khan attempting, attempting to bury the Jeff Hardy story in the media. Okay, well, uh, you can throw that one out. Um, Tony Khan <laughs> does not have anything to do with this. As far as Nick Khan goes... I mean, obviously, there's all kinds of conspiracy theories, a million ones, you know, that, that he's like a shark and taking over and getting rid of all the McMahons and everything like that. Um, I don't think that there's... I don't know what reality is when it comes to that. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a minefield. It's a minefield. But, I mean, as far as... In, Internally, no. No one is internally. Nobody suggested anything like, you know, Nick Khan and Tony Khan. You know, I mean, he, he couldn't do it. He didn't do it. He's not on the board. Um, I would like to know if Vince McMahon does decide to step down, who would replace him? That is a tremendous question. Would that person have the power to solve the company? Well, the board would probably be the person, and and Nick Khan. Um, as far as a sale, um, I th I've always thought that Nick Khan's role, one of Nick Khan's role was to uh, get the profit margin as big as possible to help facilitate a potential sale. I think many people have, have felt that that was, that was it. So, um, but ultimately, you know, a sale has to be approved by Vince because he owns the voting shares. So, um, it's, yeah, so that's still, and if, you know, I don't know how Vince would be out. Out. I mean, he could be out of power, but he still got that, the voting share power. So, the as far as the deal itself, now the idea of you know would Vince want to sell? I always thought that Vince was, um, Vince. You know, there's been talk there for six years of Vince wanting to sell, just getting the right price, and nobody has offered that right price. You know, the you know it came ever since um, 
Lorenzo and um, Lorenzo and Frank Fertitta uh, made the deal to sell the company for four billion. Which now WWE you could not get WWE for four billion. Then if you had offered four billion, they'd have they'd have sold in a heartbeat in 2016. But the value of WWE and of big businesses and everything has escalated greatly in the last six years. And it would take you know their their company stock value right now alone is five, and you would have to get more than that. Um, and there's a million different there's a million different scenarios out there from Nikon and Dwayne Johnson and somebody spearheading something and I mean it's and it look it's all possible especially when you talk about a sale and even like like again like like the cons I mean you know could Tony Khan spearhead something you know I mean he couldn't do it tomorrow but could it could he potentially spearhead something work with a lot of people with a lot of money and be the one uh to do this and then you would know who would be in charge obviously i don't know if there's going to be anything to that but if you're going to place a bet on people i mean he's someone who would have interest he's someone who would certainly have the connections uh to potentially come up with that the kind of money if they were looking to sell you know i mean obviously the the smart people to buy this is NBC Universal because they're the ones who are spending four hundred sixty five million dollars a year on this thing and in, if they were to spend five billion um, you know considering how much that these rates are probably going to escalate over the years um, you know it would you know like like you use the math and say it would take you know they'll, they'll make it up in eleven years it's probably a lot less than eleven years it's probably closer to eight. Um, of the type of spending, you know, that they would do annually, especially considering they would probably get like a huge increase on the next deal. So, um, and also um, the ability to, you know, get back SmackDown to NBC Universal, whether they would go on NBC, whether it would go on USA, because things have changed a lot. You know, you, you know, before you would say it would never go on NBC, but now with cable TV ratings being low, so low on Friday nights, I mean. They beat NBC programming, you know, on Friday nights regularly. So why wouldn't NBC be interested in as a Friday night show? Um, you know, before it would be like NBC's too prestigious. They would never want wrestling. Well, things have changed when it comes to that. Um, let's see. There was just an article recently about Vincent Mann shopping an autobiography possibly to compete with the unauthorized biography, which is the Abraham Reisman book already in the works. Does the unauthorized biography contain information about these allegations? Um, I don't know what I should say here, but as of yesterday, it did not. As of today, obviously, that book is going to have to be rewritten. Um, and uh, you know, that's the reality. That book, I think that that book was largely written. I don't know if it was 100% done, but it was largely done. I, I know... It's not actually I know even before this it's not a hundred percent done I could tell you that but it is the book is largely done there is a manuscript out there that much I know about and obviously that thing's gonna have to be like you know ripped up this changes the entire book um, so um, as far as Vince's biography that changes the entire dynamic obviously the other thing too is the television show you know the Netflix show that they've been working on uh, that changes a lot of the dynamic of that show, too, because it's going to, you know, the whole show is about portraying Vince McMahon as this baby face and Phil Mushnick, you know, and others as these giant heels out to get him for all the stuff in the 90s. And I, it was always a weird one to me, you know, on the trial and the, the Justice Department, and everything like that. And with this hanging over Vince's head, I don't know that Netflix wants to put a, you know, put a show like that on the air. It's kind of. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, even even if Vince doesn't have to leave with the sexual allegations and everything against him, that becomes a very tricky little thing there. Uh, what impact do you see this having on AEW? I mean, I, you know, it could be gigantic. It could be nothing. I, that's way too early to say. Uh, could this possibly jumpstart WWE? I don't see it. I don't see this as good for WWE in any way, shape or form. Uh, will Nick Khan attempt to go after AEW more? It's got bigger fish to fry. They're always look. They'll always do that. You know that game's always going to be played, but it might not be played the same without Vince. 
you know, Vince is a different kind of game player. A lot of other people just kind of look at the bottom line and just do what's best for your business and not want to compete and fuck up the other guy's business. You know, Vince is not that guy. You know, Vince is a competitor, a uh, ruthless competitor. If Vince is out, you know, will that type of stuff like booking, you know, booking the Nassau Coliseum five days before the UBS arena, booking Madison Square Garden, loading up on a show right before they have a show and things like that. Will somebody else in charge do that? Probably not. That stuff might change. So, you know, in, in that sense, but I don't really know how much that affects it anyway. I mean, it's like Vince has done this because that's how he works and that's how his mind operates. But when AW, just as an example, has gone into these markets, you know, that Vince then runs the show right before, you know, and tries to load up and everything like that. The fact is AEW's continue to draw in the market. So does it hurt? You know, maybe a little bit, but I mean, they had 20,000 people at that uh, um, Arthur Ashe Stadium show. And even the last show, you know, they had a, they had, what was it, over 8,000 people, you know, for, you know, uh, the show at the UBS Arena, the last one they ran, you know, with WWE at the Nassau Coliseum just a few days earlier trying to counter program. And they, you know, so, I mean, how much more would they have drawn? I mean, maybe some, but but not, it's not like that. It's it's not like WWE running keeps them from drawing fifteen thousand and drags them down to eight. That's it, that's just not the case. Um, who was on the board and what is their loyalty? It was a bunch of different people on the board. Um, will there be potential blowback on the leaker? Who knows? Um, Let's do how, two more. What? Let's how do two soon more? Will, of these. This, this, this is this is this is this is this is a bunch of questions just here alone. Um, how soon will Vince be out? We don't know this. Um, what is the production status of the various books and documentaries on Vince? Um, yeah, I think I pretty much answered that one. Um, who are Vince loyalists we could expect to see exiting with Vince? Um, I mean, look, there's, there'll be, there will be a lot of people in when these, if, if there are changes and if Vince is gone, there will be a major turnover. I mean, Kevin Dunn probably, but you know what? It all depends on who gets power. We don't know who gets power. Who gets power is going to determine like the names of the guys and who they are close with. I mean, everyone who's a Vince loyalist, um, if the new people in charge, and again, we don't know if there's going to be new people in charge. We don't know. It's every, it's, that's, this is all really way too premature. Um, who might get the book with Vince, you know, um, um, how did the story get out? Look, you know, somebody wanted the story out and it got out. Um, do we have confirmation that Vince and Linda are still married? Technically they're married. Um, you know, I mean, they haven't been together in a long, long time though. Um, let me just go through here. Uh, how what does that be look like a year from now? <laughs> Nobody. Can All right, I think that's about it for these questions. Hold on. We do not know what's going to happen a year from now. Yeah, just um, let me just see if there's any more. If Vince McMahon receives a vote of no confidence from the board of directors and forced to leave, um, I'm assuming Nick Khan will take over the business side, but who will be in charge of creative? It's the same thing. We don't know. It could be. You know, the thing is, is it's not like, you know, like the, the last time, just remember the last time Vince was looking for help um, because, you know, trying to show Wall Street that, um, you know, we are going to turn this business end around. The two people he went with were Eric Bischoff and Paul Heyman because they were the guys who were the guys that were his leading competitors 20 years ago they went back there because this business has not really developed a lot of people with the experience like on paper eric bischoff was the head of this company that at one time was very successful paul Heyman was the head of a company that did a lot of brown groundbreaking things both of them ended up being gone shockingly fast eric eric maybe not as shocking um because a lot you know from from day one People kind of had told me that, you know, he didn't know the product and, and he wasn't going to last. And, um, you know, and he didn't. And Paul lasted a little longer, um, you know, as far as like what, you know, what the reasons were that Paul was gone. And even to this day, you know, it's it's all speculative. And Paul is still with the company and still a very powerful person in the company and actually very powerful when it comes to certain aspects of creative. I mean, Paul, you know, a lot of these angles that you see on top 
have a lot of Paul. I mean, I see Paul Heyman's fingerprints on a lot of things. But, you know, it's it's Vince's company. Paul does not have any decision-making power, but he absolutely has a lot of influence. Um, but he was also taken out of that position that was a very big money position and a very, you know, very big, big position for him. He was taken out of for, you know, was it was it over the, um, you know, the, the situation with Gallows and Anderson being fired? I mean, you know, because that sort of happened and, and, you know, AJ being so upset and, um, you know, the way that that thing went down. I mean, I don't know. Was it because the ratings were lower? And they were. The ratings were, were not good, even though Paul went in there from the very beginning and his thing was, is, look, the ratings are going to go down because it's going to take 18 months, two years, whatever the time frame is, to really get these new guys over that I want to get over. And then the problem was, is that everybody who wanted to get over, three weeks later, Vince lost interest in. So, you know, he probably, you know, honestly, I don't know that he'd ever been successful because, you know, you have a guy whoever it is, you want to get him over and you get this program using a top guy to get him over. And then Vince says, yeah, I don't want this top guy losing to this guy. You know, you're kind of you kind of like you're booking with handcuffs anyway. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.